Inflation occurs in an economy when there is an expansion of the total amount of money. For example, let's say a society uses gold coins as money. Gold is the money supply. In the marketplace, Billy, who really likes apples, buys an apple from Farmer Jack for a piece of gold. However, one day Billy happens upon a gold mine. He makes himself piles of gold coins. He then rushes to the market and buys 10 apples from Farmer Jack. The money supply of the economy has just expanded. It has experienced inflation. Farmer Jack now has more money and he can use it to buy more goods. He visits the marketplace and buys chickens from Mary. Now Mary has more money too. With her new gold money, Mary would also like to buy more apples. But there is a problem. Billy was able to buy so many apples very cheaply with his new money that there aren't many left for everyone who wants them. Also, since more people have more money and want apples, Farmer Jack recognizes that he is able to raise the price of apples to two gold coins. Yesterday, one piece of gold bought one apple, but today you need to pay two pieces of gold in order to purchase an apple. Ultimately, one of the results of an inflation of the money supply is that once the new money enters the economy, prices rise and the purchasing power of money eventually decreases. In an inflationary situation, those who benefit are those who receive the new money first. Because Billy found the gold first, he was able to take advantage of the low prices before Jack adjusted them for inflation. The other people who benefit are those who had taken out loans. For example, George lent Lauren four gold pieces before Billy found his gold mine. Lauren then immediately went and bought four apples from Farmer Jack. That was when an apple cost one gold piece. However, apples now cost two gold pieces. Lauren pays George his four gold pieces back, but now those four gold pieces can only buy two apples. George lost out because of the inflation, but Lauren gained. The good news, however, is that because there is a limited supply of gold in the world, Billy will not be able to find a new gold mine every day and inflate the money supply even more. However, inflation can also occur when governments inflate the money supply. For example, in ancient Rome, the Caesars needed to find a way to fund their massive armies and public works projects without reducing their incomes. To do so, they would collect the gold and silver coins the people paid for taxes. They would then melt the coins down, mixing the gold or silver with cheaper, less valuable metals such as copper, stamp the coin with a picture of the emperor, and authorize the coins as official currency. This process is known as debasement. Let's see how this works. Let's say the Roman government originally collected 50 100% pure gold coins in taxes. They could use these 50 gold coins to pay for 5 centurions for a month. But the government instead took these coins, melted them down, and mixed them with cheaper metals. They can now mint 60 debased gold coins. The Roman government is now 10 coins richer. They can now pay for 6 centurions, or, if they prefer, they can pay for 5 and keep 10 coins for themselves. Initially, everyone is happy. The soldiers have more money and buy more goods from the merchants. The merchants have more money and buy more goods from manufacturers and farmers. The manufacturers and farmers are happy because they have more money and so on. However, by the time the money gets to the farmers, the merchant has found that the money was debased. To make the same profit as before, he now raises his prices, which makes the farmers' money worth less. They, of course, raise their prices to the merchant. The next time the soldier visits the merchant, the prices are higher and he finds he can afford fewer goods than before. The Roman centurions obviously ended up pretty mad at the government. Unfortunately, this is bad news for all the other people in the society who wake up to realize that their money has lost value overnight. Once prices rise, their gold coins now buy fewer goods than they did before. Essentially, by inflating the money supply, the government has secretly taxed the people, devaluing their money so the government will become richer.
the government's inflationary schemes get out of control and they continue creating more and more new debased coins, it will lead to a situation known as hyperinflation, where prices skyrocket and the money eventually becomes worthless. Since in today's society precious metals do not make up the money supply, inflation happens by other means. People buy and sell with paper dollars printed by the government. Thus, the government does not have to go through the difficult process of debasing coins when it wants more money. It can simply print more dollars. The government can spend its seemingly free money on any projects it wishes. But the money isn't really free. There are no free lunches. Those people who get the government money first benefit because they can spend it before it devalues. However, as the money spreads through the economy and people have more to spend, merchants will raise their prices. Subsequently, those who receive the dollars last will find their purchasing power has decreased. Just like what happened in our Apple story and in ancient Rome, prices rise and a single dollar buys fewer goods than it did the day before. Inflation occurs in an economy when there is an expansion of the total amount of money. As a result of inflation, prices rise and the purchasing power of money eventually decreases. The people who benefit are those that get the new money first and those that had taken out loans. Governments throughout history have tried to get richer through inflation by debasing the money supply. In our society, the government prints more dollars. Inflation acts as a secret tax, devaluing the people's money so the government becomes richer. If a government's inflationary schemes get out of control, it can lead to hyperinflation, where prices skyrocket and money eventually becomes worthless.